Hey, it's Brian G. Johnson. In this short tutorial video, I'm going to share with you how you can easily greatly improve the load speed of your website thanks to two WordPress plugins. Now, out of the box, WordPress is pretty clunky and it's a little slow when it comes to page speed. However, thanks to the community, there's some really fantastic free plugins. Now, I've been optimizing and building this site, which is about how to uh, build a custom home, and I thought it would be a, a great uh, a topic to cover and I'm going to be learning so much about it and we thought it would be fun my wife and I to launch this website and keep people up to date so um, I've just gone ahead and created a feature area people can opt in and stay up to date and now like I said we're gonna optimize the site to load faster now you might be wondering you know does how fast or slow a web page load really impact Google rankings and the answer is yes and that's from Matt Cutts who ha happens to uh, head up the web spam department at Google now Matt also mentions that other factors are much more important things like relevancy and whatnot but we want to do anything we can to basically address what Google's after and looking for and work towards that here if I click this link you can see the article that Matt's got on his blog, which Google incorporating site speed into search rankings. So in other words, the faster your site ranks, or I'm sorry, the faster your site loads, the better. So with that, we want to do some things to optimize the performance. We're going to use um, page speed in a bit, and let me show you what that looks like. Now, Google has a tool online where you can actually analyze your site for load speed. And all you need to do is you simply drop in the URL of your site, you click Analyze, which we'll do right now, and Google loads the site, looks at uh, how your site loads, how your server is configured, and then reports back to you. We're 85% of the way done. And in just a second, we'll get a score, and really we're shooting for a minimum of uh, about 75 to 80. And you can see right now on mobile we have 63, and on the desktop version is 66. Now when I did this with my marketing site, I actually scored a little worse than this, which isn't the greatest. Now my site ranks around 70, 74, 75. So these are some things that we can do to greatly improve uh, the page load speed. Number one, on an earlier video, I had you upload a plugin called WP Smush It. And what this plugin does is every time you upload an image to your website, it go ahead, it, it uh, basically reduces the file size, it compresses the file size. And you can see here, this uh, Blueprint Christmas was reduced by 3.4 percent. All I had to do was activate a plugin. This was another image that was reduced by 7 percent. And if you look through, you can see so many of these images have been reduced in their size, and it's all based on a plugin. Now you'll also see these ones in red. They weren't able to do anything because images have to be less than one megabyte in order for sm Smush It to optimize the image. If they're bigger than that, well then you need to optimize your images yourself. I'm actually looking for an app on my iPad to optimize and compress images. And once I figure that out, I'll get back to you. But you can see it really makes a huge impact. And that's one of the things you can do right out of the gate. Now another thing we can do is we can take advantage of W3 Cache. Now I found a tremendous... Um, tutorial on speeding up the WordPress site. Now again, let's just write down some numbers here. So for mobile, we're sitting at 63, and for the desktop, we're sitting at 66. Let's see if that number, those, those numbers uh, improve once we use uh, W3 Cache and use these tutorial, this tutorial that was available at webdevdoor.com. If you click this link, it will take you to this awesome tutorial that explains exactly what you should do and the changes you should make, okay? Okay, let's get started. First of all, we want to go ahead and we want to activate W3 uh, Cache. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. 
I'm going to go to uh, plugins, installed plugins. I'm going to look at for inactive plugins. I'm going to go ahead and activate W3 Cache. Now, I've, I've looked at this plugin in the past, but if we come up here to performance, you'll see that it is crazy. It's got so many settings, it's really hard to know how to move forward. Um, these are all the settings, general settings, page cache, minify, database cache. This isn't the stuff I'm really interested in. I'd rather just focus on solid uh, content and whatnot. However, that being said, we want to do what we can. And this tutorial is really pr quite good. So now we know we can just do these three th simple things um, under the performance menu and general settings, and we're going to enable page cache. So let's go here to general settings, general settings. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to enable page cache. Okay. Page cache. Here we go. Page cache. Enable. Enable minify. Keep def default settings. Okay. Minify. Enable. Keep default settings. So we're just going to keep everything the way it is. We're going to come back here. The last one is enable browser cache. Okay, fair enough. Database. Oh, here we go. It's enabled. And now I'm going to select save all settings. So first we wanted to enable page cache. We've done that. We've enabled minify. Good. And we've enabled browser cache. That's good. Okay, next we need to save settings and select empty cache if the notification appears at the top. Now I didn't see that on this site. However, on my other site I did. Oh, here we go. There's the setting right now. The settings changes have either made uh, invalidated data cache data or modified the behavior. So let's empty the cache like it said. Okay, that's awesome. Now we need to come in and we're going to modify the HT access file. Now, and I need to change that to an M for modifying. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically copy this information copy all this from right here all the way down here. We're going to copy that and we're going to go to SEO. We're going to go to dashboard to edit files and now here's the HT access file. Okay, now I'm going to basically enter this here. And here's the end expiring cache. Expiring cache. Okay, save changes to HT access. And now we, we want to make sure the site is up and it's not working right. So I'm glad this happened. I'm going to show you how to do this manually. Let's see if we can refresh the page. Okay, I'm glad this happened. What do we do when we get an uh, internal server error? And this often happens when we're dealing with an HT access file. I thought it would be interesting to go ahead and try it through um, the SEO Yoast plugin. But what we need to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to use our FTP program. See that? There's our HT access file. We're going to send this over and we're going to edit it manually. How do you do that? Well, first you're going to right click, rename the file, HT access.txt. We're going to hit OK. 
Now we're going to open this up. We're going to come all the way down to the bottom, and here is where the problem started. We're going to delete that. We're going to hit save, and we're going to delete this HT access file. And we're going to send over this file, which is a text file. It's not actually an HT, HT access file. There it is. Now we're going to rewrite it. Operation, rename, one, two, three, four. We're getting rid of the .txt, which is a text file. We're going to hit this like that. Now we're going to go ahead and see if we still have an internal error. Okay, so what I did is I sent that file over, I renamed it, and I still had the 500 error. So what I did is I simply deleted the HD access file off my server. And if you ever have this happen, I want to show you exactly what's happening. So the home page is visible, but the HD access controls the uh, path to the custom permalinks. And if I click this, you see it's not found. So how can we remedy that? Well, we can log into the dashboard. There we go, and we can come into settings, and we're gonna to go to permalinks, and it's set to post name, and we're gonna simply click save changes. Now I'm gonna guess that our, uh, our site works as it should. So here's the address of the page that wasn't found. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh now. And it looks like we're good to go. So I fixed the, the mess up, and that often happens, and you just have to figure out how to fix it. And what we need to do is I'm guessing where I edited the HT access file was wrong. So I'm going to come back in here to SEO. I'm going to look at uh, Edit Files. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in that code right here code here and let's see if that works so I'm gonna scroll over here I'm gonna grab this copy and now I'm gonna save changes to HT access and it this is what happened last time it went the same color Oh, busted up again. All right, well, we'll keep figuring it out. All right, so I did a little bit of playing around and whatnot. And, you know, when you're working with an HT access file, really you're at the mercy of your server configuration. Now, you should only be doing those tweaks on an Apache server. And there's a good chance that something in the setup just wasn't working. Now, let me show you, uh, at this point, notice that um, our speed has increased on mobile we went from a 63 to a 67 and the desktop we had quite of an, an improvement we went from 66 to a 79 so we're doing pretty darn good um, let's see my marketing easy street site Sixty-eight and seventy-three, so about a similar stats, and it's really dependent on what you've got posted, how big your site is, and so on. Now, if you have issues with the HT access file, like I did, here's one of the things I noticed. I came in to SEO for the Yoast SEO plugin. I accessed Edit Files, and here is the HT access file that we were told to edit. Now, it might work absolutely fine for you, but if it doesn't, Again, all you're going to want to do is delete your HT access file, and when you once you delete this, the file, you'll be able to log into the WordPress admin. Then you're going to go to uh, Settings, Permalinks, and you're going to update Permalinks. After you're done updating Permalinks, then you're going to go want to go back into the uh, Performance tab. Okay. 
And you're going to want to make sure that you basically perform a compatibility check and then empty the cache. And once you're done with that, you can come into the Yoast plugin. You can go to Edit File, and you can see if um, the W3 Cache plugin has made any adjustments. And I've, I can already see that I think what's happening is this plugin, W3 Cache, has been updated, and it's already writing this information to the htaccess file. Okay, you can see again, htaccess mod rewrite, and we've also got all the information we need on the permalinks. So we save changes to HT access to fight the site, I should say, remains uh, functional, right? So I'm browsing the different pages on my site, no problem. I'll go to a category page, it comes up fine. I'll go to a permalink page. So everything is working fine now. And we made some improvements to our page speed. Now, like I said, if you're having issues or you're worried about the HT access file, I would suggest you don't worry about it and simply install the W3 cache plugin, make those changes. That's what I did on this site and I had some pretty dark, decent um, improvements on the site overall, okay? Hey, it's Brian Johnson. I have one more video for you. And then in the next video, or I have a few more, uh, a Google site verification. So we're going to add this website and the video site map to Google so we can collect all kinds of interesting data on the site and understand how we're ranking, what kind of keyword phrases we're showing up for, and lots more. I'll show you how to do that on video 16. See you then.